This is Sean Weisbrot, the founder of We Live to Build. And in this video, I'm going to talk with you about the strategy that I'm employing with my investments and my companies moving forward based on how AI and the world has upended everything that we have known. So stay tuned. It's going to get interesting. And I'm going to give you a look at everything I'm doing behind the scenes of We Live to Build and beyond. If you know me well, I'll make these kinds of videos once every six months. And it's kind of a way to share with you what I've been doing, what I've been thinking, and where I want to go next. The reason why I do this is because I am more than just the podcast. The podcast gives me a great opportunity to talk with great people who are doing really interesting businesses. But I also have businesses. I'm also an investor. I'm also an advisor. And I felt like these kinds of videos are a great way to peel back the curtain and show you what it is I'm thinking about, what I'm doing and all that. So believe it or not, it is now June 2023. The last time I made a video like this was in January 2023. And so now it's time to do an update. How did my plan go and where am I and where am I going? So in the beginning of the year, I said that I was going to be looking at possibly uh, traveling a lot and maybe growing my portfolio and redistributing, rebalancing and uh, di diversifying my risk further. So what's happened on the travel side? So uh, in from December to January, I recorded about 20 podcast episodes, which is probably why I look a little bit different and I was in different locations than I am now. Currently, I'm in Lisbon, Portugal. I'm recording this on June 1st, 2023. And uh, from that time, I ended up spending almost a month in Guatemala. It was an amazing experience. I spent a lot of time speaking Spanish. I got to learn so much about Guatemala. I had never been there. Um, and my Spanish has got a lot better because of being there. Um, and after I, I went back and spent a few weeks in Atlanta with some family, which is beautiful. And then I moved. I thought I was going to move to Prague. Um, I had met someone and uh, we have been talking for eight months online. She's from Canada, but living in Prague and such a wonderful person. So I ended up going uh, to Prague. I ended up spending six weeks there trying to date her and seeing if there was a serious potential for us to have a long term relationship together. Unfortunately, that did not work out, um, but there's no hard feelings. She's still a wonderful person. I consider her to be a really good friend. And I know that we'll be close for a very long time, even though that's not in the original way that we had wished for. Um, so Prague was beautiful. It was also freezing cold. Um, so after we broke up, I decided to go to Spain for three weeks. I went to Malaga. And while I was in Malaga, I actually got to meet with Emily. If you are a longtime follower of the podcast, I interviewed her two years ago. She's a Spanish entrepreneur. She had raised over half a million dollars in a seed round at that time. And we uh, we met up a few times because I was there for three weeks in in this town, Malaga, and she was a very sweet person, um, a lot of fun to to talk with. Um, so I'm really glad to do that. That's the second person I've interviewed so far that I've been able to meet in person. The first one was uh, Vladimir Gendelman. I interviewed him last year. He runs a company called Company Folders, and uh, he's based in the U.S. Him and his wife ended up in Portugal last year, and so we were able to meet in person. So I really love getting the opportunity to meet the people that I'm interviewing because they're humans, and, and they have their own lives, and it's so cool to see them outside of the screen. From Malaga, I went back to Portugal because I was only in Spain for a few weeks, and I have a residence permit for Lisbon, for Portugal, and I like Lisbon, and, and I like Portugal a lot. So I've been back here already for two weeks. I'm going to be here for a few more weeks before I have to go to the U.S. for a wedding in Seattle. And then I'm going to go and spend time with my grandma, who's turning 90. Um, and then I'll end up back in Lisbon in, in um, you know, July so that I can continue on my residence permit and, and my life here. So that's my travel side. Personally, I have learned a tremendous amount. Uh, one of the companies that I had invested in was acquired. And even though it was acquired at a valuation less than I paid for it, I was still able to get something out. And I decided I was going to re-diversify my portfolio by taking that money and investing it in a few things. So what did I invest in? And what were the experiences from that? I had invested a little bit of money into Forex and I was trying to, to do things that I'd never done before. I wanted to learn about different ways in which people make money. My experience was 
if you're not managing the trading process yourself, the results will vary. I ended up making a few hundred dollars after a month or two. Um, maybe some people might think that's a really great return, but for the amount of work that I would have to put in if I wanted to manage it myself, wasn't worth it. So I decided to stop the Forex after two months, but it was an interesting test nonetheless. The next thing that I tried was liquidation, and I'm going to actually make a longer video about the liquidation because I invested in a business that's doing liquidation. So it wasn't like I did everything myself. Um, and so I think that's a really valuable uh, thing. So it's now been four months. And uh, originally, I had just intended to uh, give them cash and let them, you know, get an opportunity to grow the business faster. And it turned into something that I really enjoyed. So I decided to become an equity investor in that company. Um, again, I'm going to talk a lot more about that in a future video. The an, Another thing that I had tried was affiliate marketing. And I had a, an idea that I was going to do uh, healthcare related services where you create a funnel and you get someone through Facebook ads to go to your website. And then they're going to call a number and talk to an agent and the agent would ve uh, the agent would validate them. And if they're eligible, then I would get $40 for the call. Well, it failed miserably. <laughs> I, I made nothing on it. I actually spent about $500 doing ad tests and building the website and all of that and um, paying for a, like a private VPS server so that I wouldn't have my own Facebook account banned by accident because Facebook loves to ban accounts. And I discovered that it wasn't right for me. I know a lot of people that are making a lot of money for it, but I couldn't crack the code. Um, what I learned from that experience was uh, if you don't have a lot of money that you're willing to basically throw away um, for testing, then it's not worth getting into. The second thing is having something that requires someone to call means that the, uh, the chance of success is much lower because Facebook doesn't really let you manage when your ads get spent. So you could say, I want to spend $100 today, and it could spend it all in the first minute that it goes live. And then you have no ability to test because they screwed screwed up and, and they wasted your money. So there's a lot of things that, that suck about the model. Um, and so you may have a phone number that people are only standing by from the hours of 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. But if someone sees that at 9 a.m. or they see it at at 3 p.m., they might not want to call until 9 when they're off work, but then the thing is closed, and so there's no agent standing by, and then you lose the sale because they forget the next day. Or um, So there's a lot of reasons why that particular model wasn't good. Um, maybe if I had picked something like e-commerce for affiliate marketing, maybe it would have been better because you could do sales 24-7, and it doesn't require you, someone to call. Um, so that was my learning there. I'm not going to do another video on that because it was a very, very short um, experience. I spent maybe a month doing that. I... Um, then decided what I would be doing uh, was to focus on investing in early companies that are that are going to generate cash flow that are not reliant on venture capital pathways. Because when you invest in companies like that, you're going to have to give them a lot more because they're going to have this idea that their company is worth millions and millions of dollars. I know I've been there. I, I raised for my own startup um, at a at an eight-figure um, uh, valuation. And it's a lot of work. It's a headache. And I don't want to deal with that. I'd rather invest cash in someone and then advise them so that there's more value in that. I'll, I'll make another video about my investment philosophy, um, how I find these companies and all of that. Um, but for now, let's just say that... Uh, I feel like there's value in me building up We Live to Build because it's really my personal brand now. And then maybe having another company that provides a service, but then taking the money from those two companies and investing it into other companies that I can advise on how they can grow within their vertical. Um, so again, another video will be coming out about my investment philosophy. So what's my kind of thought process going forward? It's really build up We Live to Build so that I get more opportunities with speaking, with more advisory to promote my uh, new investment that's doing the automation and integration company, Optimi, because they're going to be a consulting agency. I'm not going to be operationally involved, but I will be promoting it to get new clients. So um, that's really the strategy. Build up businesses with as little money as possible and invest as little as I can in them. Um, and help them with advisory and building referral networks and client bases and then letting them run and grow the company on their own um, outside of my own advisory. 
And then really having this portfolio of companies that are creating dividends for me on a quarterly basis, kind of like someone would build a real estate portfolio. Um, obviously, there's a lot more risk to it, but I believe the rewards could be a lot higher. I'm not against building a real estate portfolio. I'm actually potentially going to be buying a place in the US and another place in Portugal this year. In Portugal, I would live in it. In the US, I would rent it out. And the rent from the US should be enough to pay for the mortgage of the house in Portugal. And when I'm not in Portugal for a few months out of the year, I would be able to rent that out and have income from both of those on top of the, the money from the other businesses and the dividends and all of that. So basically, I'm trying to build a, 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 a passive-ish cash flow uh, ecosystem. And again, I'll, I'll talk about the um, investment philosophy in another video. So if you liked this video and you want to work with me, definitely check out the website welivetobuild.com where you can learn about my advisory service, my accountability service, my speaking engagement service. If you want to be a guest on the podcast, there's a form there for you to fill out. And we also have a Discord server where you can come and talk to other entrepreneurs that are doing some really cool stuff. Thank you for your time and your energy and for watching this video and look forward to our next video where we talk about some of the other cool stuff that we're working on. Possibly I'll be talking about my investment philosophy.